Hey guys, I'm here to talk about frame skip. Normally when we use it, we're going to run a game here that may not perform very well, so we try to activate frame skip to improve things. Today I want to talk about just that. Here, for example, we are seeing the FPS expected by the system, which is 60 frames, and the FPS that the device is currently running at, which is 40 frames. And here on the side, we have a suggestion to activate frame skip. But here, this percentage is the speed at which the game is running. So, here in the case of God of War, the emulator, this PSP emulator here on the console, it comes configured this way to run the PSP game catalog. Sometimes frame skip is enabled, depending on the operating system, but here it is disabled. And other settings are placed here, such as textures, upscale, and the anisotropic filter. So, this is the default setting. If we look at it as it is now, load a save, we can see that we are running at 50% speed and at this moment, reaching close to 30 frames without frame skip. We can see how slow the game is in terms of movement and occasional stuttering. So, even though it's running at around 30 frames, we can see that it's now almost in slow motion, right? Running at a very low speed. And right away we might think, well, then I'll activate frame skip here to improve that, right? Its speed here will be proportional, so if it reaches 30 frames, that means the speed here will reach 50%. So, the first step we try to take is to go here to frame skip and enable it. Frame skip here is actually a technique that is used in games and emulators to try to improve the fluidity of the gaming experience. When the frame rate, or FPS, is below the ideal, which is the case here, right? The ideal frame rate for this game is 60 frames but the game is only managing between 20 and 30 frames. So, I enabled automatic frame skip here to frame skip one. And then, when we look here, the fluidity improves a little in relation to the character's movement. Although the frames here have not increased, the fluidity of the game improves a little in this case. So, we notice that he is walking, how this part has improved a little, using frame skip one. So, we go back here to that initial stage. So, here we continue with frame skip. I'm going to replicate that same thing. So, here I'm going to do. We can actually see here that the fluidity is a little better, his movement. Although the audio isn't that good, we can see a slight improvement in performance. So guys, with frame skip 1 enabled here, we can see a slight improvement. What is frame skip doing here? It is providing increased fluidity because it skips frames, so the game seems smoother in this case, even if the actual frame rate seems low or remains low. So we see that we remain here at 20 frames, but there is a little more fluidity. And frame skip here can also help reduce the delay between the player's input, my input of the commands themselves, in relation to the game. So it makes the gameplay a little more responsive. Let me go back here to the other point. This also has some problems. It can result in less smooth animations, a less rich visual experience, since some frames here are being skipped, but the focus is on gameplay and it also improves the fluidity we have here. So the solution is to improve gameplay, but we realize that the requirement that is set is 60 frames. In this case, it will not be performing at 60 frames here. You may be wondering, since this is the case, can we go to the settings and increase the frame skip amount itself? In this case, it is now set to frame skip 1, which was the test I was doing with frame skip 1, but we have other options here. What does that mean here? It means that the emulator skips one frame for every two frames rendered. This means that even if the emulator is only rendering 25 FPS, it is effectively skipping frames to keep the gameplay more fluid. This way, the frame rate we perceive can be improved, and the emulator can compensate for the lack of rendered frames. When I set frame skip 2, the emulator renders one frame and ignores the next two frames. Therefore, it renders one frame every three frames. This means that, in terms of proportion, it is effectively rendering approximately 33.3% of the frames. 
so let's test frame skip 2. If I set frame skip 2 here, let me reset the game here. Frame skip 2, here we can see the number of frames, and we can also see that there aren't that many changes. But the frames are still low, even though the speed is high. So, when we go back to frame skip, I'll go back to 1. Let's test it again here. You may be wondering why the speed is still high. It's showing 57%. This metric represents the percentage of the game's execution speed relative to the ideal speed. When you see speed equal to 50%, it means that the game is running at 50% of the speed it should be, meaning it is much slower than expected. The speed marked here is proportional to the frame rate when you are not using frame skip. This means that if you have 30 frames out of 60, the speed will be 50%. When I set frame skip, it skips frames, which means that this should be a little smoother. What does this allow? It indicates that even though the emulator is only rendering 25 FPS, for example, it is managing to maintain a speed closer to the ideal, in this case, 80% of the total speed. This is because frame skip allows the game to remain playable even if it is not rendering all frames. The big issue here is that if we leave the game free, without frame skipping, we realize that it is not even able to reach 30 frames properly. So that means that the equipment itself is not even reaching 30 frames. In fact, it stays between 20 and sometimes a little less. The normal thing here would be, even if you disabled frame skip. I'll remove frame skip here. The idea here would be to make this game run at up to 30 frames. PSP games are usually fixed at 30 frames, in the case of the original PSP. And a few games are for 60. Here in this part we have the cheats, you import them here. Here you have the option to set it to 30 frames. This way, the equipment does not need to have frame skip, so that it can reach the maximum that is being set for the game. I'm going to set it here to 30 frames. Set to 30 frames and no frame skip. Here now I have 30 frames. As you can see, speed at 100%, 30 out of 30, it will have a drop. But look how it runs without frame skip. So I put here for the game, the frame requirement part. It is within what the game, in this case the hardware, is able to deliver. Which is between 20 and 30 frames. So it's much smoother here in this case. As you can see here, it's managing to deliver between 20 and 25. Almost close to 30 frames, without frame skip and its speed remains at 100% and drops a little at times. But we can see its fluidity here. Because, again, the equipment here is not capable of delivering 60 frames. So it doesn't make much sense to leave it at 60 frames. If I put the frame skip here, let's see how it looks and come back again. Here now we are without frame skip but set to 30 frames, which is closer to reality. Now, I'm going to set the frame skip. In this case, frame skip 1. And we can see here that there was a decrease in the count. Because it is skipping frames, although at 100% speed in many moments. So, we can see the effect here. Let's look here with the frame skip. And now, without frame skip. So, notice that here it is equivalent. The frame skip itself won't help much. Because the equipment is able to stay close to the set limit. So, Putting the frame skip here at this moment won't give us that much gain, due to the capacity we currently have. So, back to the frame skip. And even when needed, the frame skip doesn't help that much, it depends a lot on the difference between speeds. We notice that the performance is similar. However, we have some slight graphics losses. And now, just to finish up, I'm going to disable frame skip here. So, we notice that the performance ends up being the same, as long as you can get the expected frames for the device to run. In my case here, it's 30 frames. So, that's it, folks.
this should work for the vast majority of games. When you set this limit without having to use frame skip, it works much better and more smoothly within the capabilities of the hardware you are using. So that's it folks. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing and see you in the next video.